Laura, thank you so very much for um, stepping in and taking the spot today. Um, and it can't be more timely. Um, I mean, good things happen and bad things happen. Uh, and we miss Kristalina tonight, but no one would be better to, to take that spot, especially considering what's been happening through the day with uh, the, the whole issue of a refugee ship um, called the Aquarius. There was a struggle all day uh, to get the Italian government to say, yes, we'll take the refugees in. No, we'll not take the refugees in. Mayor's almost going into uh, mutiny. And finally, at about 4.30 this afternoon, we had the Spanish president say, we will stand up for international law and we will take the migrants in. And the Aquarius found a home. You have history with Matteo Salvini. Um, was the leader of the far right um, League party, now the interior minister behind this entire fiasco. Run us through what you've faced in the last couple of years and what these migrants may not have seen him, but they've now faced as well. Good evening, everybody. I'm really delighted to be here with all of you. Thanks to Fortune, this was possible to connect all of us, to get in touch, to exchange ideas, opinions, and hopefully to forge new alliances. So thank you very much. Yes, who is uh, Matteo Salvini? Matteo Salvini, <laughs> I'm so sorry I have to speak about Matteo Salvini. <laughs> My tree, are you sure? Uh, he's a guy who invested a lot of energy, time, and ideas on uh, you know, um, making people understand that the migrants uh, are those guilty for all the evil, for all the problems we are in the country. So he created his career uh, just you know, accusing migrants and refugees uh, to, to be the one who were you know, uh, making crimes. And at the same time, he used uh, this kind of uh, um, strategy. Every time a migrant committed a crime, he put an hashtag, Boldrini's resources. So imagine what, what this means when uh, the, there is a rape or there is a killing, and he you know, put this hashtag, Boldrini's resources. Why me? Because uh, you know, I worked for uh, 25 years in the UN agencies, uh, and 15 years in the UNHCR, the High Commissioner for Refugees. So um, his propaganda was, uh, he needs an enemy. He's, he needs an enemy. So since uh, I had this background because, before becoming the speaker of the Italian Chamber of Deputies for five years, I come from you know, the UN, the UN agencies, he wanted me to be the guilty. So every time there was uh, a crime committed by migrant, I was uh, the one to accuse. Like uh, migrants uh, are landing in Italy is Boldr at Boldrini's invitation. Uh, migrants are raping, a migrant uh, is raping a woman, is Boldrini's friends. So this created a, a climate of tension against me and a race of uh, There was hate. a story at some point about an inflatable sex doll. Yeah. One them. day he was uh, in, a, uh, in a rally and uh, he was speaking at a rally. He took an inflatable uh, sex doll and he said, here we are with the president uh, of the Chamber of Deputies. So uh, people from his party you know, uh, at a certain point last summer, when there was a terrible rape uh, committed by a bunch of migrants, a ter terrible one, he said, let's send, them, let's send them to Boldrini's house in order to make her smile again. So rape, but these are mayors, mayors, not, uh, you know, normal people, uh, people with responsibilities. So the climate, uh, it's like this. In addition to this guy, who is now the Minister of Interior, I also had a similar experience with the other one, which, are, which is in alliance, uh, the head of the Five Stars Movement, Beppe Grillo. So also this guy is using sexism like a political weapon. You know, instigation to rape as a political weapon. And uh, he had a, another brilliant idea to make a post saying, if you had Boldrini in your car, what would you do to her? So imagine 
the kind of reaction. This was in 2013. I was just appointed Speaker of the House, you know. It means that this climate accompanied me for five terrible years. And not only me, unfortunately. I'm an adult and I can cope. But also my family and my daughter, she was also, uh, you know, targeted with this kind of uh, uh, terrible, you know, uh, threats, uh, threats of rape, threats of uh, deaths, uh, threats, whatever. And whatever it was, it was only sexism attack. Never, never, ever my tray on the issue itself. Never I disagree with you because. No, it was just uh, I wish uh, they rape you. I wish uh, uh, I could do this and that today. So always sexism. Now I ask, is it possible to accept such, uh, such a treatment? Why we women have to accept to be treated that way? Why this is considered almost normal? So why a public figure, especially in policy, in politics, have to, has to accept to be treated that way only because uh, yeah. she has a position? So mm -hmm. I think we have to really react uh, in a way which is collective. Yeah. We have to join forces. This is why I say forge alliances, uh, because in Italy, the women were not enough strong during these years. They didn't react. And if one of us is treated that way, you have to consider that there will be a next one treated that way. So if you don't react, it will be the beginning of the end. Yep. What I do want to do is for us to, uh, as Laura says, we're adults. We take responsibility for our actions, but our families don't. So I do want us to, to give a hand to her daughter who's in the room tonight for standing up with her mother through this entire five-year process. Thank you so very much. Because that is where the community starts at one point, and you bring up a very valid point. But you also did a study um, about the levels of hate in yes. Italy. And what I find fascinating is the result of that study, because from today's headlines, you would think it would be migrants. It's not. No, it is not, although also migrants are in a very good position. I wanted to uh, establish at the Chamber of Deputies a committee, a parliamentary committee, as advised by the Council of Europe uh, to um, assess the level of hatred in Italy. The, the, obviously, the uh, Council of Europe advised all the parliaments to do the same, but we were the first one to implement uh, such a recommendation. And uh, so there were MPs from all uh, the parties and experts from the outside. They made a report and, uh, you know, unfortunately, at the top of the pyramid of hatred, there are women. Women. Then there are homosexuals and then there are migrants. So if you have a woman, who in her life, uh, you know, uh, was an advocate uh, for uh, women's rights and also for, you know, human rights. You put all the three together and you understand why I received such a treatment. Well, ladies, I would like to come to you for questions. So if anyone has one now, great. Otherwise, I'll give you a minute to think while I ask her the next question because I have a list mm. that goes on and on and on. So if <laughs> Don't make them scared. <laughs> they, they, I don't think Sounds I can scare like them. Sounds like a threat. <laughs> no, no, no. These are women who are f not scared of anything. There's one right there. Oh, picture. <laughs> Hi, Lucia here. Not Italian, but Italian name. <laughs> um, quick question for you. You mentioned this was going on in 2013. Do you have a better situation with women standing up now hmm. in 2018? No, unfortunately, uh, what I see also, if I, without speaking of myself, because it's always embarrassing, if I present the case of uh, Asia Argento, you may have heard about Asia Argento. She's an actress. She was the first one who went public with the um, Weinstein case. Uh, she was the first one who spoke to, to Ronan Farrow, who got also the, uh, the prize, uh, the, the Pulitzer Prize. And she had the courage to go public and to say, yes, you know, this guy raped me when I was uh, 20, 21. So you imagine then you, that this woman now, she's 40, 42, uh, receive solidarity and support from, from all the other women, 
No, 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 wrong. She was accused and mistreated. She was uh, addressed like a prostitute, the one who took advantage, the one who thought too long to go public, the liar. So it was unbelievable. While in the States, uh, she was considered, she is considered in a hearing because she is uh, the first who had the courage to go public. Uh, and I went to the States with her. We were interviewed together by Ronan Farrow at the Lincoln Center because, uh, you know, it was organized by women of the world. Uh, Tina Brown organized this event. In Italy, she's considered like, uh, you know, the prostitute. And now that you know, Bourdain, uh, the chef, the famous Anthony Bourdain, died, made suicide. Uh, he was his, her partner. In Italy, if you, if you see the, 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 the net, if you go to the um, social media, you see that they accuse her to be the one who has the responsibility for this. So this is misogyny. I can't find another definition. This is misogyny. So uh, this is why I think in my country there is a sort of uh, emergency in a sense regarding women because uh, mm, it's like, uh, you know, women lost the rain uh, uh, along the years and especially young women considered, you know, the, the, the issue of women already. So the Me Too movement's just not taken off? The Me Too movement, uh, which was initiated by an Italian, uh, was very, very weak. Media, the Italian media focused on the scandal in the States. Everyday reports from what's happened in the States, but they didn't, they didn't have the initiative to investigate in Italy. What was the situation in Italy? Because, you know, I would be happy they are not harassers, but we know that they are. And uh, the only actresses, three actresses who dared, you know, to make names, she were considered as Asia like uh, liars and prostitutes. So the media were not part of the revolution. The media didn't feel they have role to pay, you know, because you, if you play that role, you give, you know, the cause uh, a sense of reality. And also you give confidence to other women because they're not alone. They are part of an initiative which is shared among stakeholders. In that case, didn't happen. So media were reluctant to trust women, and women in Italy fear not to be believed, not to be believed. And this is something really critical because we are a big country, a G7 country, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, <laughs> and how possible, you know, women are in a situation where they have to justify themselves if they, you know, sue a, 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 a violent man or if they go to the police and uh, say w what happened to them. They have to justify themselves. Well, I'm Indian, so I completely um, identify with that feeling because of the change, but Patty had a question. Hi, Patty Sellers from Fortune. Laura, thank you. What is the best advice that your daughter has given you hmm. through all of this? And what is the advice that you give her? Let's start from the advice I give her. I give her the advice um, not to be, um, not to suffer because of this. Because they were Photoshop of a decapitation, decapitation, mm -hmm. decapitation, rapes of all kinds of things, you know. On her Facebook page, sent on purpose, you know. Mm -hmm. So I advise her not to pay any attention. She's a, a mature woman at this point, and she um, believes this is fine, although she's paying a price. But she, she's always telling me, <laughs> go ahead, I'm with you. I know you are doing this also on our behalf, on behalf of me and of our, our us, girls, in order to try to give us uh, you know, a better country. So she is close to me, we are friends. We are on the same side. We had another question at the back there, and then we'll go at the back. Buonasera, Monica Mandelli from KKR in New York, but I'm really Italian. Good to see you again. Uh, I guess, 
I was the chicken that left the country 20 years ago because I figured it was too hard for a woman to succeed and I moved to the United States where it's difficult but probably much easier than it is in Italy. And I guess the question for you is, what can we do? I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with educating the men because I think the women are pretty much on board. We all know what we need, what we want, mm -hmm. but I think we need to educate the men. So what do you think practically we should be doing to change the situation because I find it quite depressing, but I feel that all of us must have a role in mm -hmm. helping making it happen. Mm -hmm. you, you're right. All of us has a role. We don't have to delegate to anybody. So we have to take our own responsibility for doing something. And I don't like uh, those who, women who believe, you know, that they, they made it and they don't want to help other women. Like uh, Madeleine Albright said, <laughs> there should be a, a place in hell for women who do not help other women. And I strongly believe so. I strongly believe so. Yes, you are right. We have to start from men, from boys, from children. We have to educate them uh, to respect, to equal opportunities, equal rights. Uh, we have to educate them how to use the web, the social media, and this is why I promoted a project uh, uh, for students, which is implemented now, how to recognize fake news, because fake news are the, fake news is the antechamber of uh, hatred. You know, you create something which uh, doesn't exist. You want to uh, destroy the reputation of somebody in order to make that person you know, hated by the public. You want to create chaos. So fake news is it's a real problem. And also, you have to mm, make women work more closely together uh, in the parliament. For five years, I tried to, you know, uh, put the women together from different parties. I established the first uh, women caucus. There was no women caucus in the parliament. And I wanted all women MPs to work together for you know, uh, to sign the same bill or amendment in order to improve women's conditions. It was not easy, but at least, uh, you know, it was a beginning. Then I also wanted to give women of the Republic their visibility. In the Palazzo Montecitorio, which is very beautiful in Rome, you only have, uh, you know, portraits of men. Like women never existed in this palazzo. So I decided to open up a, a, a nice hall La Sala delle Donne, the whole of the women, the women of the Republic. This is empowerment. I wanted, so I put the pictures of all the women who wrote the Constitution, mm -hmm. the first mayors, you know, the first min woman minister. But then uh, when I, you know, wanted to select the, the, the picture of the President of the Republic, yeah. there was no picture. So I put a mirror. <laughs> I put a mirror. That's good. That's really good. Do you want And girls now sorry, go, go sorry, sorry, my turn. Girls now when they they arrive at the chamber, we you know, they visit the chamber, thousands of them, they all take the pictures, Presidente della Repubblica, with their face, you know. It's a way to empower them. So meaning that you have to work a lot on this, but there are MPs, female MPs, who do not want to spend their reputation for uh, gender equality, because they think that they lose uh, credibility. Mm -hmm. uh, they maybe, I don't know, or they, they are, I don't know, are things which are related to women, so they Soften lose them, uh, yeah, the capacity of leadership vis-a-vis -vis their colleagues, uh, men colleagues. So if women do not commit themselves, who else should? Maybe a concept of hero men that was floated about at uh, um, another conversation that I was having. Uh, maybe an idea, but here's a question for you. Giuseppe Conte, who's now the new uh, prime minister, um, very keen, like his party, uh, or the coalition, to be close to Russia. What does that mean mm. for Italian women, half the population, let alone the international law question that was brought up by just the actions of today? Well, um, yes, from Matteo Salvini, uh, um, Mr. Putin, he's uh, uh, his favorite political personality. 
is a hero. So you understand my concern. Because in Russia today, civil rights are under pressure. Freedom of expression is basically limited. Then uh, domestic violence has been depenalized. Speaking of homosexuality in public is a crime. So if Matteo Salvini, the Minister of Interior, is considered Putin, you know, the biggest personality of the world, <laughs> you consider, I mean, this is a real danger, a real concern for all of us democratic people who do not believe that can be considered a reference. So, Mr. Conte is a weird uh, gentleman. He's a, uh, very weird. He's a professor. Nobody knew him. He came out of the bloom. And now he's supposed to be, I don't know what, the person directed by Salvini. He's deputy prime minister, by the way, minister of interior and deputy prime minister, and by Di Maio, which is, uh, who is the, the head of the Five Star Movement. So this guy, when he arrived, the program, the government program, have been already finalized. Have you ever seen a prime minister who doesn't take part at the, at the program of the government? I've never seen him before. And all ministers have been already decided. So this man uh, is, is very un is unprecedented. Uh, how can I tell you? I don't know. It's really weird. It's really strange. It's something which uh, I don't know how can how can happen. It's um, it's an interesting conversation to have at a point at which here in the UK we're looking at Brexit. We've um, had a bit of a wake up call uh, at some point uh, about the pros and cons of both sides. In Italy, for the women uh, and for the men, um, which part is more worrisome? The flip-flop between will Italy exit or will Italy not exit? Or is it more the migrant and human rights issues that you've been championing? OK, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a, a, a pro-European uh, politician. so. Uh, I think, but you lost. So we have populism now. Yes, unfortunately. but I think that uh, the European uh, Union is uh, the biggest, biggest, most successful peace process in history. Peace process in history. Seventy years of peace among states which, for centuries, millenniums, uh, fight each other, fought each other. You know, yeah. and. Uh, and the European Union managed, you know, to convince those member states to solve their problems through dialogue, through debates, not through bullets uh, or bombs, like in the past. So for me, this is something which has no price. Obviously, this European Union is not perfect. There are so many limits. There are so many you know, limitations which, uh, uh, you know, don't allow member states uh, to develop the entire potential, maybe. But without it, as far as Italy is concerned, it would be really impossible for us to compete uh, with India, with China, with the states. Uh, how can we compete with these uh, giants uh, by ourselves? So our efforts should be, to me, to change this European Union in a way to make it more effective, more capable to solve people's problems, citizens' problems, but not to break it. Because once it's over, I don't know, we also have to consider that also peace would be something, you know, not more certain like it has been for 70 years. Well, I think the Aquarius today and what the Spanish president did kind of showed that whatever the flaws, there is some sort of conversation still ongoing. We can only hope. Laura, thank you so, so very thank much you. for joining us on stage. But let me, let me show this T-shirt. Oh, please do. Let me show this T-shirt before to go away. I'm very proud. I bought it in Canada, you know? And uh, yeah, but was, uh, was uh, in, uh, in a men's shops.
<laughs> because in Canada, being feminist apparently is very fashionable for men and women. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, yay to the... As Donald Tusk said, there's a special place in heaven for Justin Trudeau uh, in response to certain other comments. But we'll say there's a special place in heaven for the Canadians for that T-shirt alone. Yeah. Yay.